Hey, what's up, guys? This is Clayton, and uh, trying out a new thing here, doing this video. I don't know. So I'm going to talk about something, and uh, that's it. I'm just going to talk in this comfortable chair. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about something today called the deepness divide, and I kind of came up with this word. I don't know if this is an actual thing or not, but I heard something like this a while ago. I think it was Scott Morgan on YouTube, and... He kind of mentioned this concept, but I kind of took it and sort of evolved it a bit and made this analogy that I kind of think maybe helped me understand a few things. So uh, the main problem, well, maybe not the main problem, but one of the problems in my life is I feel like a lot of times if I, you know, social interaction is tricky because I say things or I hang out with people and I think I'm just a deep thinker. I'm actually not just, I think I'm like a very deep thinker. I overthink things. Um, I get super contemplative, philosophical. I'll pick issues apart. I'll rip apart base assumptions and ask why on everything. And, and people ask me why I do this. I don't know. It's just the way it is. Um, it's just what I do. I cannot just sit here and be in the moment. I have a really hard time with that, like live in the moment. I'm like stuck in the future, planning something or... Uh, you know, philosophizing about whatever. And um, other types of people basically find it quite easy to live in the moment, and that's what they are. So I kind of, uh, the problem is when these two types of people get together, and sometimes it just doesn't work out very well. And, you know, I wonder why. And so here's my analogy to kind of help, help, help me understand it, I guess. So you've got sky and then you've got the ocean below. So you've got sky, a bunch of air, the surface of the, wa the water, and then you know, you've got the whole ocean and then the ocean floor. And this is like a spectrum of where people live. So birds live up in the sky in the clouds. That's where they're comfortable, let's say. And then in the middle, maybe things like turtles, let's say. Turtles, um, they live in the water. They might go under the water for a while. They can hang out with the fish, uh, but then they can come right back up. They breathe air, so they gotta come back up. They can hang out on the beach. Turtles can hang out with fish, and they can hang out with birds. They're kind of like a ha this happy medium. And then, you know, also you have actual fish then. And so I feel like this environment is sort of an analogy for how the deepness, how deep of a person you are. And I'm not really sure how else to explain that. I was trying to think of a way. I'm not sure if it's introverted and extroverted, because I, I have a feeling that you can be introverted, but still not be a super deep thinker or extroverted and, you know, be a decently deep thinker. But I think introverted and extroverted might have something to do with it. But basically, let's say you've got a person who's a bird and they're way up in the clouds. Like that person might be, they live in the moment, like super just free and adventurous. And, um, you know, they don't really like to talk about really deep stuff and like, you know, things might get covered up and everything's fine and ev let's, just, let's just have fun and let's do these things and uh, let's just all be together, you know, let's all be a flock of birds and fly off under the sunset. And then on the other hand, you've got these fish at the bottom of the ocean and I think that's basically where I am. I'm at the very bottom. So like the very top is not deep at all. The bottom is super deep. And so basically I am perfectly happy just talking and getting super deep and dissecting things and challenging people, challenging people's assumptions, challenging people's beliefs. Even if I think something is true, I will often take the opposite side just to consider for a moment what is it like to believe the opposite of what I actually think. And you know, sometimes that's the best way to find out what you really think is true. And, uh, you, you get the best defenses that way too. A lot of times people, they get stuck on these beliefs. They don't ever consider the, the opposite side. And then when someone comes along and challenges them, they freak out because they have no way to defend themselves because they've never thought about it. Um, anyway, back to the topic. So you got birds up top, you got fish down below. So, you know, normally speaking, Fish and birds might like hanging out with each other a little bit because it's like, oh, the fish come up to the surface and they hang out with these, these amazing birds and they get them out of the deep zone for a while and it can kind of be this fun thing. And same thing with um, the birds. They, they, they might just live, they're stuck in the sky so much that they don't ever really get down to business and really question some things. So they come and they might interact with the fish. And then sometimes you might have families 
well, all the time you have families, and families are made up of all different types of people. And it's, there's always this base assumption that because you're part of a family that you're gonna understand each other. And I just don't think that's true. Um, you might have like the highest soaring bird and the lowest swimming fish as like, let's say a parent and a child. And it can get kind of awkward because the problem is, okay, so here's, here's the problem. Fish come down to the surface, sorry, birds come down to the surface and they feel like, wow, I'm super deep because they're at the bottom of their environment at that point. This is a deepness scale, starting at the top all the way to the bottom, but they only go to the ocean surface. They might even dive under for a second, you know, because sometimes birds do that. So let's say they dive under for a second to see the fish, and the fish has come up from the bottom and is hanging out right at the surface, and the fish is thinking, wow, I'm super shallow right now. This is a little uncomfortable, like, a, you know, I gotta get back down to this, the bottom soon, but I'll hang out here for a minute because they have this relationship. So you got this bird, thinks it's super deep. The fish thinks it's super shallow. So then they have this interaction. And at the end of it, the bird might leave thinking, wow, yeah, I had a good time. We had a good deep conversation. And then the fish leaves though and is like, wow, that was a really frustrating conversation or maybe not even frustrating. Maybe it was just like, oh, that was, that was a nice light conversation, but maybe I didn't really get to the things that I wanted to discuss with this person. Like, let's say there was, uh, I, mean, I got some issues I need to work through or I have some ideas for them. And the problem with this is I have a feeling that the fish can act light and in the moment for a bit. Um, and enough to trick the bird even to think, wow, we had a great time. But really the fish is thinking it wants more. So the fish can leave that interaction thinking, wow, I wish I really, I, I need more in my life. And if that's all the fish has in its life, that fish is going to get, I think, lonely, probably a little self-conscious about its ideas because the, the birds don't really seem to pick up on what it's, what it's saying. It's like, what about this guy? And they're like, ooh, that's, that's, that's weird, you know? Meanwhile, it makes perfect sense to the fish. So let's say you have a fish that doesn't ever come up to the surface. Well, then you, you can't even have that relationship. Even if the bird comes down to the surface, the fish is way down here. That's like some reclu reclusive person in the corner. There's just not even opening up. It's impossible to have a relationship with that person. But in the, same, in the same way, the fish can come up to the surface and the bird's not really coming down to it. It's just kind of hanging out up here and going, hey fish, are you stupid? Why don't you come up here with us? Why don't you come home and hang out? We're flying around right now. Can't you see that? The funny thing is they're, 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 they're wondering why this fish isn't doing what they want when in actual reality, they're just being extremely insensitive as to what this fish can even do. And I think the problems arise when these people that are clearly birds won't let the fish be a fish. So I think that is my sort of explanation about why people often don't understand the fish. Because if the fish then say, it's like, okay, enough of this. I'm gonna to try to get this bird to go a little deeper. So the fish starts going down. The bird's kind of trying, it's struggling, it's swimming. And then it's like talking up at the bird and the bird has no idea what's going on at this point. The, the bird is like, I'm drowning, I'm, I'm too deep. And they just start to freak out. And I've seen that multiple times. I have done that to people. I, you know, I start to wonder, Come down here with me. Why aren't you discussing this? Why are you avoiding this issue? And the bird, you know, maybe doesn't have the best debating skills. So then the bird says things it doesn't mean. And then it's just, it's contradicting itself. And then the, the fish grabs onto that. And it's like, why are you contradicting yourself? You know, are you being inauthentic with me? Blah, blah, blah. It just can turn into a bad situation. Um, however, if the fish is aware of this beforehand, and knows the limits of the bird, and it just knows that there's no possible way that bird is going to go down, that's kind of what I've learned. That's sort of where I've got to at this point. I can't expect that out of people. So in exchange, what I really need to do is find a couple of fish to hang out with now and then. It doesn't even need to be that often, just, just often enough to, be, to reassure me, make me feel like I belong somewhere, uh, make me feel like I'm not crazy, like I actually am thinking things that are sane and not just, like, I remember growing up, I used to always say, or even like in my 20s, I would say, 
you know, either I am crazy or the whole world is crazy. That's what I would always say. Like, either the whole world's crazy or I am, but there, there's something wrong. Um, and it's probably more plausible that I'm crazy, right? The funny thing is I'm not crazy. I'm, 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 I've, it took me a long time to get that confidence that what I think and the theories I come up with and the things I dissect and the conclusions I come to, the evidence I collect, um, th those things mean something. I, I think that most people just don't do it. They, they don't get to that point. They, they more easily accept the constructs handed to them by society. Meanwhile, I'm like, well, why is that? Why is that like that? Well, what does that mean? Well, that doesn't make sense. And it can drive certain pe types of people crazy, I think. But anyway, why did I make this video? I don't know. Maybe there's somebody out there that is a fish. And they're wondering what's wrong with them. They're trying to like hang out with all these birds. And nothing wrong with you. You just got to get a couple good friends. And I have that in my life now. And it's been hard because fish are naturally hard to get to know. So like, you know, it could take years to really get the right friend. Whereas birds are just, it just seems like, hey, let's be friends, okay. I mean, I'm not trying to criticize the birds either, but it just seems that way. Like they're, they don't need the super deep undertones and the, the trust really to have a friendship. I think that's why my definition of friendship is a lot different than most people's. Whereas I would only say I ha only have a few friends. Uh, whereas, you know, I ask super extroverted people, everybody's their friend. Oh, I have this friend and this friend. Oh, I have a friend that said, I have a friend that does this. I have oh, you should meet my friend, this person. And meanwhile, I'm like, well, is that person my friend? I don't know. They've never, they've never opened themselves up emotionally to me. I feel like I can't be friends with somebody until we hit that emotional connection. Anyway, it's the end of the video. I don't want it to be too long, um, but I hope that made sense. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, if you think this video sucked, let me know. If you think it's interesting, maybe I'll make more of them. I don't know yet. So uh, thanks. Have a good day, guys. Talk to you.